Hey guys, welcome to the Drama Club. On this <laughs> week's episode, we talk about shit that is way too young. Ariana Grande is way too young to be fucking doing anything. <laughs> Mary Kay Letourneau gets with a guy that's way, way, <laughs> way too young. And Fergie is way too old to be pissing herself. <laughs> <laughs> All Stay this tuned. drama and more <laughs> on today's episode. What up, fam? What up, fam? Good, Feels good, right? Good, right? <laughs> yeah, I know it, dude. Yeah. Yeah. And without further ado, we broadcast some live from CA to M. Yeah, me too. No one actually has complained or anything. Well, no, I didn't think it was that bad. It's just you. <laughs> really? You think it's just me? <laughs> You are a perfectionist. I wasn't joking. Dude, my mom always tells me that she always gets real annoyed with me for being a perfectionist about certain things. She's like, it doesn't have to be perfect. I'm like, (laughs) no, that's nice. That's good. I remember when iTunes updated music and you could scroll through like album covers Mm -hmm. and you forced Peter to put an album cover on every one of the albums he had downloaded for you. Yeah, because I just uh, I just can't. I can't look at stuff like, like that. I don't like, give a shit. It's like a blank one. <laughs> <You're> right. <laughs> like things that are supposed to be ordered, like I just they have to be, you know? <laughs> Which is weird because I think that I'm I think I'm a laid back person. It's just like certain things. Yeah. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> so we had to re-record late last night for the episode that dropped today and now we're recording for the episode that's dropping next week oh god i am i'm it's kind of okay. pumped i'm i'm running on fumes because like i i actually dropped the episode an hour late because i was like doing last minute tweaks to it you're so crazy me <laughs> <laughs> i would not have put that much effort into it <laughs> On the bright side, mm-hmm. I really like the Instagrams of Heather Mills and Brigitte. Oh, yeah, I do, too. I was um, debating posting some more ex- explicit pictures of both of them. Yeah, because Heather Mills has some, like, cootie shots and stuff. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> what are the rules for Instagram? I know people are all free the nipple or whatever. Like, Yeah, you- but you can't put nipples on it. Oh. So I'm pretty sure Cooter's out, too. Oh, god damn it. I know. Is that 50 we years could just of do it and get banned? <laughs> Fuck it. 50 years of feminism and we can't show our fucking coochies on Instagram? <laughs> Fuck this. What was it all for then? <laughs> Susan B. Anthony? Fuck you. <laughs> <laughs> My friend, David, who is a uh, also slight listener of the podcast, he told <laughs> so I saw him last Saturday. His direct words to me were, I like your podcast, but I can't finish any episode and i said why and he said it's too dramatic (laughs) (laughs) damn we gotta change the name of the podcast i know anyways he said that he was telling hoel and i that he does he doesn't really drink wine we were at a like a pool party and some Mm -hmm. people were drinking wine or whatever and i was like yeah i don't really drink wine either unless i'm trying to go to sleep um and he said yeah somebody had gifted me a bottle of wine and and it was like the only alcohol i had so i like put it on ice and i watched sex in the city by myself and i drank it and <laughs> yo that's and, uh... I was, and i was like whoa david and he was like no i'm all about the ambiance like if i'm watching mad men i gotta drink whiskey you know what i mean <laughs> yeah yeah dude he should have like run a bath yeah, lit some right? candles hell yeah go bought himself some roses and a face mask <laughs> And treat himself like the young, independent, single woman he is. <laughs> he is single. Shout out to anybody who wants to date my friend David. He's Salvadorian and he's funny as fuck. How come I've never heard of this David before? Ooh. I don't know. I like, I'm sure you met him. He was at my Halloween party. I like I like wine. I like sex in the city. <laughs> I like pupusas. We can't have two Central American <laughs> people link up because that's how gangs get started. Oh yeah, we'll be so, qual- <laughs> classified as a gang. <laughs> Jeff Sessions will be like, "Get your asses out of here." Yeah, I, c- I would never be able to hang out with the both of you because they'd be like, "Oh, there goes MS fucking Fontana." It's up to each one of us to know the rules and follow them. All right. So, what do you want to talk about today? So, our hot topic for this week is that. Ariana Grande 
after five seconds of dating, what the fuck is his name? Pete Davidson. Pete Davidson is now engaged to Homeboy. Oh my god! First of all, it was First drama. First of all, it's, it was ahead. drama that they started dating five seconds after he uh, broke Dunk up with Larry, Larry David's, David's daughter. daughter. That was shady as fuck. And yeah. he was with Larry David's daughter for a minute. And I'm sorry, yeah. he was all about the "I love yous" publicly to her. Oh, he was. I didn't yes, know. Yes, he got a tattoo of her. What? Yes, me. What? Like of her face? Yes. Whoa. Okay. Yeah, so I don't know. I feel like Larry David's daughter daughter is definitely too cool for this motherfucker. If I were dating Larry David's son, I'd get a tattoo of Larry David. <laughs> <laughs> if I were da- dating Larry David's son, I would never later be engaged to Ariana Grande. <laughs> yeah, he fucked up, dude. That is so random to me, but she was the guest. So they met like two weekends ago when she was the guest musical guest on SNL. <laughs> And then they started dating and then they posted like some video of them in in fucking Harry Potter robes, which I don't I don't understand because I never read any Harry Potter books or watched any of those movies. Uh huh. But people were freaking out. I feel like people were just getting over freaking out that they're together. And then it was like they're engaged. Right. And also she just went through a breakup, too, huh? Oh, she did. Who was yeah, she with? She was with um, one of the white rappers, Mac oh, Miller. That's right. Is it Mac Miller that she was yes. with? Yes. Yeah. Okay. I forgot she, about that. Well, she was with that fool and they broke up like, I want to say a month and a half ago, two months ago. She was with Big Sean. She was with Big Sean. Yeah, that's kind of weird, right? She has a strange and varied taste in men. Yes. And <laughs> Pete Davidson is not the business. What if he's funny? Well, he is funny. He's on SNL. But in real life, because... That's a completely different thing. That's scripted. <laughs> yeah. Uh, who cares? <laughs> <laughs> I mean, like, that's, that's like, attractive or whatever, but that's, like, the least important thing, I think. His sense of humor? No, it's not like, oh. you know, like, I don't think it's, like, that important. Oh, I think Not it's his like- sense of humor for him to be funny. Oh, for him Someone to be funny. Someone could have a sense of humor and not be funny. Yeah, that's true. I'm funny. I don't need Hoel to be funny. <laughs> he's pretty funny, though. Yeah, he's funny. He has his moments. Yeah, just like uh, me. <laughs> <laughs> Sometimes when I get a really good joke down, I'm like, well, that's it. I'm done for the day, guys. <laughs> you want to go out on top? top that. <laughs> uh, she's funny, actually. She is? Yeah. Why, uh, she licked those donuts? No, that's not funny to me because you never disrespect a donut. <laughs> <laughs> She or okay, maybe it's what you're saying. I don't know. She's funny, but she does have a sense of humor. She can laugh at herself. She does like impressions and like she's she's funny. Okay, that's cool. What do you think about like the length of their courtship? Well, like remember when we were talking about Sylvester Stallone and Brigitte Nielsen and how people were writing their obituaries already? Like, yeah, their, their relationship obituary. You want to record a hot topic for their pen- upcoming. Uh, oh, divorce yeah. and or breakup and we'll just yeah. keep it on deck yeah exactly we're gonna have to do that because let's just do it right now all right guys ariana grande <laughs> and pete davidson have broken up it is june 14th 2018 there you go <laughs> and uh we're just we're doing this just in case and by just in case <laughs> i mean definitely in case <laughs> <laughs> how old is she she's too young to be engaged I don't know how old she is, but she she makes me uncomfortable because yes. she, she tries to make herself look like a little baby. I think we've talked about this before, yeah. but it's I don't know weird. What that is. You kind of like fetishize young girls. Yeah, it's fucking weird. I don't like it at all. Me either. She seems good as fuck. Yeah, she does. I don't really like I'm not super familiar with her music, but I do like I do like her voice, though yeah i've seen her perform cover did you see like when she performed for barack and michelle no and she performed like whitney houston mariah oh Carey. really yeah so good i did i have seen like youtube videos of her doing mariah covers and they're really fucking good yeah she's great all right well uh good luck i guess <laughs> you gonna fucking need it <laughs> <laughs> that's just shady <laughs> well get engaged after five seconds and expect people to be all happy for you no and also pete is uh 
bipolar Problem, yeah. Yeah, and he's like issues. he's got a rough childhood like just, just don't make rash decisions with someone like that exactly what if he's going through uh, a manic episode it? there you go don't yeah. they do things like that when they're in a they, manic episode yeah they do things like that and it's not it's not good for him it's not good for your relationship if you are serious about this dude like yeah take care of him but whatever that's none of our business yeah it's none of our business whatever <laughs> inside our school we also have rules for fair play and for getting along together <laughs> all right let's introduce ourselves oh my name is stephanie and my name is May, and we are the Drama Club. Drama. But we're too dramatic, apparently, so we're going to have to... Are you drinking a La Croix? Yeah, I am. A mango La Croix. La Croix. Yeah, we're too dramatic, so we're, we might have to change the name of the podcast, TBH. I like it's none of our business. <laughs> I also like, what did that bitch say? Get over it. <laughs> Get over it. <laughs> <laughs> no, bitch. <laughs> I'm not getting over it. <laughs> Imagine thinking you need to defend Winona Ryder. Like Winona Ryder is in her fucking mansion in Petaluma, fucking that sexy ass guy. <laughs> Petaluma. Shit about you. <laughs> She's on a Petaluma. Me. She's like, where do they film Stranger Things in like Hotlanta? She's in Hotlanta, <laughs> <laughs> Georgia. Do you still watch The Walking Dead? No, I stopped watching after they killed. <laughs> Spoiler oh, okay. alert. Because. Because <laughs> I heard they had, uh, I saw He's a blind, leaving, right? I I saw a blind item that they're having some onside drama. Well, the main guy Rick is now leaving. Mm -hmm. Well, that makes sense. It's about time. I that don't often. care for that show because the story doesn't advance. Carl, like people just die. Like that's not advancement of the plot, you know? Yeah, it's like the same thing. Like they come across some new mm -hmm. community that's kind of making it work, and then there's obviously something wrong with it or whatever. Yeah, it's just like a po like them existing in a post-apocalyptic world, I guess. Yeah, it would be cool if they start actually built something, and they're the politics of building a new nation or something. I don't know. Yeah, <sighs> I thought it was good in the beginning. I binge watched like the first two seasons to catch up to Howell, who was watching it. And then I had nightmares about uh, fucking zombies for a while. So then I took a break. About fucking zombies? <laughs> no, not. <laughs> <laughs> no. I was talking to Jasmine the other night about. Fucking ni zombies. <laughs> <laughs> about nightmares. Yeah. Because uh, she said that. I don't remember what she said she watched, but she said it gave her like really bad nightmares. And I was like, oh, hell yeah. I definitely want to watch it then. You want to have a nightmare? Because I love having nightmares. Oh, my God. Just exists in my mind. Every <laughs> fucking day is a nightmare. <laughs> I was I was telling her that nightmares are like the only thing that makes me feel alive. <laughs> oh, my God, May. That's like <laughs> crazy. You sound like a heroin addict. <laughs> like, that's why I like like a really good horror movie. Like when a horror movie really scares you. Because I so feel scared, like, huh? yeah, there's nothing else that feels like that. I don't know. I really want to see that movie Hereditary seen that no it, it's a horror movie it's like like the best reviewed horror movie of like the last 10 years i, I think it came out last week it's really? with uh tony collette who i love oh yeah yeah she's fucking badass anyway it's supposed to be like incredibly scary and very very good so i'm dying to see it you know what i really want to watch is this movie with uh anyways it's called there's something about kevin oh yeah uh what's her name uh, she's so fucking cool yeah she looks like conan o'brien she looks like I was gonna, we need I was, we need to talk about kevin is what you're oh thinking yeah of. we need to talk about kevin i was gonna say she looks like tilda uh, swinton tilda swinton yeah yeah that's a good I've been movie wanting to watch it because it's like it's super old and every time there's a reddit ask reddit that's like what's your favorite or what's like a, a movie you'll never watch again or a movie that mm -hmm. like haunts you it's people always bring that one up oh really i d i saw it once and i just had haven't really thought about it that much since then but it's it didn't really affect me like that really it's good okay i was scared to watch it maybe i'll watch it yeah. melancholia is like the movie that freaked me out for oh yeah days yeah oh i felt melancholic to <laughs> say the least <laughs> That's one of my favorite words, melancholy. I think it's uh, I don't my know. dad There's really something likes poetic about it. I'm a melancholic man. That's what I am. And he <laughs> sings it with this thick ass <laughs> accent, and it's really funny. <laughs> Do you know that song? Yeah, that's tight. 
That's Who I'm surprised that? your dad likes that song. That's tight. <laughs> Who sings that? Uh I don't know. It's going to be like some uh the Moody Blues. Yeah, and he loves uh, the Moody Blues. Oh, uh, that's tight. Of course, at times some of us have trouble with the rules. <laughs> All right, dude. Um so I got kind of did we start talking about that? I don't know. <laughs> I got kind of a serious one. I haven't done a a serious one in a minute. Sounds good. I'm super excited because the title of the squad cast that you sent me was like MKC or something? MKL. MKL. Yeah. It's not about MK Ultra. Okay. What is it? It's about Mary Kay Letourneau. Ooh. Okay. All right. So... This is one of my favorite true crime stories of the 90s. It's up there with John Bonet and OJ. And most of this I got from an old little court TV doc called Mugshots, which, sorry, Steph, didn't have as many mugshots as you think. That's Ooh, I bullshit. Just, I just got an email from Zappos, perk alert. <laughs> 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 what what does this have to do with mary kay it's very important very important okay uh i also watched mary kay and villy's barbara walters interview yes that one's so good <laughs> it's good and mary kay's new autobiography special that's currently airing on a and e which is fucking nuts if anybody wants to watch it nice um and of course, Abby, I watched her Lifetime movie from 2000 called All American Girl, where she's played by Penelope Ann Miller. I want us to be sponsored by A and E and Lifetime. <laughs> yeah, that's true. We we gotta find a we gotta email a and producer TJ Max. Oh, we gotta email a producer of the E True Hollywood Story because we single handedly brought them back to life. I think. Yeah, motherfuckers. I want a drink. You're drinking a drink, and I want one too. Mini bar. Go ahead. (laughs) Okay. Mary Catherine Schmitz was born in 1962 in Tustin, California, the fourth of seven children to Mary, a chemist, and John Schmitz, a college professor. Wow. Schmitz might be one of those names that you should never trust. (laughs) Yeah, Schmitz and Artie. (laughs) Sorry, Germany, because I think that's like their most popular name or something. Whoops. All right, so she's from she's from Tustin. Fun fact, I grew up with this girl whose family was pretty wealthy, and her mom was for a time the mayor of Tustin, and their house was probably the nicest house that I'd ever been in at that time. That's cool. It was like this glass modern, like single story estate with this incredible courtyard that had this like dope ass pool in the middle. So like the whole house was built around the pool. Oh, that's really cool. Anyway, that's when I realized that Orange County money was a whole different world compared to L.A. money. <laughs> and like, fuck, dude, now I'm mad at myself because like, why didn't I yeah, come why up? Why did with... you stay friends with her? No, why didn't I come up with the real housewives when, oh. I, when I realized that? I've brought shame to my family. Anyway, so she grew up in Corona Del Mar, which is nice as fuck. Oh, yeah. White as fuck. Mm-hmm. And Republican as fuck. We need to infiltrate Corona Del Mar. No, I don't fuck with the OC. No, we need to. Im- That's exactly why we need to be there so that Mm-mm. it's not the way that it is. So her dad entered politics when she was around two and eventually became a United States congressman, which several political scientists put in the top three most conservative members of Congress of the 20th century. And Mary Kay was super close to her dad for his whole life. Hmm. He ran for president in 1972 and got a million votes. Wow, that's impressive. It's really impressive. I think I could get a million votes if I ran for, well, I can't run for president, but I could probably scrounge up a million. <laughs> the Guatemalan <laughs> You can't be vote. naturalized and, and be president? No, you can't. That sucks. You could be the Guatemalan president. Yeah, I should go back. They There uh, might not be a million people in Guatemala. <laughs> Their president is uh, a comedian, Jimmy Morales. So, Al Salvador's ex-president is being accused of uh I think um extorting like 350 million dollars from the government or something. What? No way. He was granted asylum in maybe Costa Rica. I'm this is I'm fucking this up. Panama? There no. you go, maybe. 
Oh, yeah. No, it's Panama, I think. Imagine being the ex-president of a nation and you have to get asylum to leave yeah. that nation. And you're in exile somewhere. That's how yeah. fucking shady you are. Yeah, so he got he got a million votes. Her mom became well known for being an ultra conservative right wing political commentator. She was against stuff like the Equal Rights Amendment and equal rights for women. Oh, (laughs) (laughs) why do women do this to themselves? Uh, I think she was uh, very religious. I think it had something to do with it. What? What is God doesn't want us to live it up or what? (laughs) So Mary and John were like the poster couple for the far right. That is until John's political career abruptly ended in 1982 when it was revealed that he had fathered two children out of wedlock with one of one of his students when he was a professor. What? Sound familiar? Yes. (laughs) So she is wild. So she's got daddy issues, right? This one, this one I have, I have no problem with like saying like, all right, let's stamp it. She got daddy issues. Yeah, this is fucking textbook daddy issues right here. (laughs) Mary Kay fucking, she loved and idolized her dad. She was a huge daddy's girl. She even blamed her mother for driving him to have this secret family. Oh, wow. Yeah. So, hmm. Also, I love, love, love stories of any not so right wing person getting exposed for their hypocrisy. Yeah, me too. Because he was one of those traditional family values dudes, whatever the fuck yeah, that means. Yeah, like everybody else has to be held to this standard, but I don't. Yeah, exactly. So that I, shit's crazy. I also, dude, low key, I fucking really like secret family stories because they're so wild <laughs> to me. <laughs> how fucking, the logistics, right? Yeah, how? like how does that work out, and how, like, uh, like what is your your actual wife like? I don't know. I don't get it. It's fucking crazy to me. Right. Unless they're just okay with it. No, well, she wasn't okay with it. Right. They uh, they went through a rough patch, but I mean, they ended up working it out, I guess. That's fucking crazy. There's no fucking way you'll ever forget or forgive that. Well, you can't fucking forget it. He's got two kids. <laughs> well, they never, the, the, what's her last name? Schmitz? The Schmitz never acknowledged the two children. Oh, that's ever. horrible. Like, that's to not this their day. fault. Yeah, it's not their fault. It sucks. Um. Dude, do you remember years and years ago when we went to a taping of The Tonight Show with Jay Leno? Yeah. I remember his big topic that day was that one Republican politician who was trying to cruise for men at like an airport bathroom or something like that. (laughs) This reminded me of that because that's one of those. We got to do a story on like uh, the uh, trifling ass Republicans. Trifling ass Republicans. Yep. That's that's the title of that episode already. (laughs) When Mary Kay was 11, she was supposed to be watching her three-year-old brother when he drowned in the family pool. (gasps) People speculate if these events had some sort of scarring psychological impact on her, which which Uh, she denies, but I mean, Abby. Come on. Right? Yeah, of course. So I'm sure they did. I can't Uh, really remember much from when I'm 11, though. Really? But something big? Like, I can't Oh, rem- yeah, you would have remembered that, yeah. Right, sure. I don't remember what I got for my birthday when I was 11, but I would have remember, like, my kid brother drowning in a pool, though. True. Maybe not. <laughs> <laughs> no, maybe not, because you, like, you block stuff out, right? Like, really traumatic things? I don't know. Um, also, in the Lifetime movie about her, they kind of allude to her having an incestuous relationship with one of her brothers. What? Because they made the family was so conservative that they like would make she she went to nine schools in like 10 years because every time that they would have sex ed at a school, they would like move them. What? So she had like this weird like she's she said in the movie and I don't see this anywhere else but the movie. She she says that like that's how her and her brother kind of like learned about sex like through each other. She was the youngest of four. She was the fourth of seven. Oh, fuck. Yeah. So this is only in the movie, but she sold the rights to her story for that movie. And in general, it's pretty sympathetic towards her. So I'm assuming that she had she had a hand in it. So I'm guessing that the story did come from her. Whether or not it's true, I don't know, because at some point her 
in her defense, the attorneys were trying to like pretty much like throw whatever against the wall to try to explain her behavior. And I think that this was one, one of those things. Wow. That's really sad and sick. So I don't know. This maybe happened. Maybe it didn't. Uh, I don't know. So Mary Kay had a privileged upbringing, but clearly there was shit going on behind the scenes. Fuck yeah. Also, one of her brothers was deputy counsel to President George H.W. Bush, and another brother is a foreign policy advisor to Donald Trump. So obviously, like, fuck this whole family. Whoa. <laughs> it's possible that the one that worked for Bush one is just a regular dude with a different, you know, political opinion to me. But knowing what I know about this family, I don't want to take any chances. Yeah, so just fuck, that's fuck them all just in case. Very interesting. Mary Kay went to Arizona State University where she met frat boy Steve Letourneau. Steve knocked her up when she was 22. And she says <sighs> that she wasn't, in, she wasn't in love with him, but her crazy conservative parents made her marry him because they were afraid of what people would think. I feel like getting knocked up and subsequently married to frat boy Steve is like ultimate nightmare. You should think about oh, that yeah. tonight before you go to bed and then you'll have a fucking nightmare <laughs> for sure. <laughs> Oh, God, I'm already having nightmares about it. We should make a paranormal activity type <laughs> movie about that. A bunch of fucking frat boys named Steve and Brody and shit. And they just come to your house. Ew, and we're at Arizona State. Ew. And they pee on the floor by the toilet because they can't be bothered to uh, aim and shit. And they're having a beer pong tournament? No. So Steve got a job in Seattle, Washington, and the couple raised a total of four children there. And in 1989, Mary Kay got a job teaching second grade. She was known in the community as a badass teacher. Like people were fighting to get her kids into to get their kids into her class. Oh, so the Letourneau marriage was super drama because a they didn't love each other. Right. B, they had money problems. C, they both constantly had affairs and D, Steve allegedly emotionally and physically abused her. Oh, no. But again, that might have also been just like part of the defense. We're not right, 100% right, right. on that. But it's, I mean, she says it, so. Yeah. It's possible. We got to take her word for it, right? Right. P.S., you and I have spent some time in Seattle, and it's pretty cool up there and everything but i'm sorry you're a fool if you stay with a piece of shit fuck boy even after he makes you move to seattle yeah seriously no fuck that you were like you, can, you were in you socal can, girl you can only catch so many fish up there you, you know fucking had it all <laughs> although i do fuck with uh rachel's ginger beer so shout out to seattle yeah i, I fuck with seafood too so shout out to seattle <laughs> you can get seafood down here though fuck it and, gi and ginger <laughs> beer. You think we can't get that shit at Whole Foods? I'm sure it's there. The boozy ginger beer that we had up there, though? Oh, no. I, yeah, I have yet to see that shit down here. I don't fuck with the gum wall. That shit, that's gross. Yeah, that's pretty <laughs> nasty. So, Billy Falau, born in 1983, was one of Mary Kay's second grade students. Jesus. And it was then that 29-year-old Mary Kay took a special interest in 8-year-old Billy. <gasps> 29? So she's our, my age? Yeah. Oh, my God, May. She was apparently struck by his artistic abilities, which she felt were important to nurture because Billy had a kind of difficult home life. He didn't really know his father, who had been in prison since he was born, pretty much. And his mother was a single mom who had to work all the time, work nights to support him and his siblings. Yeah. Dude, I saw a couple of Billy's drawings from around this time and the kid was no fucking Rembrandt. Like he could, <laughs> he could draw just like, you know, there's always that kid in your class that can draw like the Ninja Turtles or something. Yeah. <laughs> but uh, it wasn't groundbreaking. I Right. I think <laughs> I think she was laying the groundwork to develop a relationship with him. That is so disgusting. She was grooming him, right? I, that's yeah, the word. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Right? The, so, yeah, she groomed him. Is that what pedophiles use? That's the yeah, term, right? Th that's what that's what pedophiles do to to kids. That's disgusting. So that little by little so they're not shocked, you know. Right, and they trust they gain their trust. They trust, yeah. Oh. 
<laughs> I just remembered that I told remember I told you that we were watching this documentary with Michael Jackson and oh and yeah they asked him about like having young boys in his room and mm -hmm. he's like what's wrong with sharing your bed with your friend and eating chocolate chip cookies and milk with them yeah a lot of shit michael don't yeah. be doing that shit <laughs> they talk about they the people talk about that a lot because they say like he groomed kids because he would have like this playground his house fucking neverland was a playground and yeah like, and he allegedly gave one of the kids alcohol and oh. that was sort of how they say that he groomed the kids that he is accused of we gotta do with. i'm I'm telling you we gotta do like a four-part episode on mj a, it's it's gonna be our christmas special this oh well, that's right that's right have you seen how britney spears keeps posting pics of the drawings her sons have made like no. dragon ball z characters are they good <laughs> um they're no. <laughs> they're they're billy falau level they're, they're, they're billy level drawings Great. <laughs> no they're i mean they're better than what i can draw you can draw though so <laughs> Thanks, like man. i'm sure you could draw a dragon ball z character i don't even know what that is is this she, a pikachu it's a <laughs> it's 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 like a man pikachu i think okay <laughs> somebody's really mad at us right now oh yeah mig mig is mad at us <laughs> <laughs> so she develops this close relationship with him and a couple years later she becomes his sixth grade teacher her husband, Steve, says he assumed that Billy was her mentee and really didn't think anything of it. What are the chances that Mary Kay graded Billy fairly? <laughs> <laughs> Slim to none. I'm, I'm sure he got an edge. Oh, yeah. In 1996, Mary Kay was 34 and Billy was 12. And it was the summer after Billy's sixth grade year. Mary Kay had recently received the news that her father was terminally ill and had months to a couple of years left to live oh no so she was heartbroken because remember right, she she's was super close to him yeah her marriage to steve had long been on the rocks and they were either on the verge of separation or separated um i've heard her describe it both ways so we don't really know uh-huh this was when Mary Kay started raping Billy. I'm going <gasps> to use the word rape here because that's what it fucking was. Yeah. A lot of the coverage of this story from back then and even up to a couple years ago uses very strange la language to describe what happened here. Like CNN called it a quote unquote love affair, which was one of the worst that's ones disgusting. that I saw. Yeah. A 34 year old and a 12 year old Tw don't have a love affair. Right. In that Barbara Walters interview, Barbara talks to them as if they're some sort of real life Romeo and Juliet. Are you fucking kidding me? Barbara Walters time and time again proves herself to be problematic. This is the anti-Barbara Walters podcast. Yeah, Barbara <laughs> Walters, you stupid bitch. Yeah, so she, that pissed me off because she has more open disgust for Monica Lewinsky than she does for Mary Kate Letourneau. Yeah, or like Holly Madison and the girls next door. Yeah. You so don't fuck over yourself. And people I don't had, also um sorry not to interrupt you but I not like I don't interrupt you <laughs> in five seconds but no but like I feel like this double standard with women because if it was a male teacher and a young girl there's no fucking way that anybody would be interviewing them and this would be any sort of like love headline oh yeah for sure for sure that's that I think motherfucker that's, would have rotted in jail and that would have been that I think that that's the big takeaway from this story yeah. that there's this weird double standard and i feel bad for boys because this makes it harder for boys to come forward with like stories of abuse by women and oh yeah it's just because if we we like portray boys as just like being little horny bastards and shit right it's a bad situation you're gonna like this story you'll see why it's very gross what they like the the storyline that was in the news okay um and People Magazine has some sort of crazy obsession with them. And oh yeah, no, they're always they're, they're always, always on People Magazine. They're always all up in there. And you know why? It's because People Magazine pays for stories. Yeah. So like you know they got these motherfuckers on the payroll. Hell yeah. I, actually, I don't want to call Billy a motherfucker. <laughs> <laughs> just this bitch. Just yeah, Mary Kay. I can can I call him a teacher fucker? Is that a bad? <laughs> is that a bad taste? No. Oh okay. Quite accurate. <laughs> Okay, but at, I will say that at least most of the stories that I read uh, in People about them are mostly matter of fact and they don't like teach, they don't portray them as these star crossed lovers. Okay. 
Anyway, in the articles that I read that have come out in the last few weeks since her A&E special aired, it seemed like the tide is shifting a little bit and people are being more critical of her behavior. Good, because the times have fucking shifted. Right. Because, I mean, there's the bottom line is that a 12-year-old cannot consent to sex with an adult. Period. No. No. Especially a teacher who's an authority figure, you know? Yeah, no way. And no. someone you knew when you were eight. Right. And like straight up four years later, like, no, no. Mm-mm. So I know that I'm giving context to the story, but I don't want anybody to think that that changes what's actually going on here. Right. Okay. And in this new special, Mary Kay refuses to acknowledge that this was wrong. She looks clearly disturbed in this, by the way. Mm-hmm. She she's obviously got some untreated mental illness or something because she keeps saying that the only thing that was wrong was the only the only reason that what she did was wrong was because she was married at the time. That's like the least of our fucking <laughs> worries. Your fucking shamber, shamble ass marriage. Like in her mind, all of her behavior was not only acceptable, but that her love for him was this beautiful thing. And her only mistake was that she was unfaithful to her husband. So she's fucking delusional. Yeah. She also keeps wanting to, quote unquote, set the record straight because she's upset that the media reports on this story saying that he was her student. But she's like, technically, he wasn't my student anymore because it was the summer after sixth grade and the school year was over. (laughs) So she's like, the media doesn't tell you that. You're going to win it on a technicality, bitch? No. (laughs) Like, bitch, who the fuck cares? You're a fucking piece of shit. That's not the fucking point. (laughs) It's like the least of our worries once again. (laughs) She also was like, oh, and I understand that Villy was held back one year in kindergarten. So he really should have been going into the eighth grade that summer. So, Oh, my God. Bitch, fuck you. A lot of the coverage of the story makes it a point to say that Villy initiated the quote unquote romantic relationship. Mary Kay describes one day after school when Billy came up to her and said he was in love with someone. And she said she asked him if it was someone she knew. And he said yes. And so she asked him if she was with someone else. And he said yes. But that she wasn't happy with him. So she asks if she knows that he loves her. And he says, I don't know, does she? So she asked him if he can hold on to this feeling for a few years until he's older, presumably 18. Yeah. So first of all, gross. Yeah. Second of all, fucking gross. If a child came up to me with that noise, I'd be like, go play with your fucking Play-Doh and leave me alone. And I I would call their parents immediately. Because something's wrong. Yes. Right. That's not normal. No, there's some. He needs to see a therapist or something. Yeah. So. She's been asked about other female teachers who have been um, in the news for sexually abusing their students. And she says that they have no excuse for their behavior because oh. <laughs> <laughs> because they all know her story. What? Yeah. She says she had no idea that what she was doing was illegal. Like, really, bitch? Then why How? did you tell him to wait until he was 18? Yeah. Right? What? Everybody on this earth knows that that's illegal. And also, she's a teacher. I'm pretty sure they tell you that like in teacher school, day one. Pretty like, sure, pretty sure that's covered. <laughs> <laughs> that's on the syllabus. <laughs> <laughs> and also, I guess when they had their first kiss, he asked if he could kiss her and she said something like, only a coward would ask. So like, what, what the fuck? The and you're is- telling you want to tell a 12 year old to man up yeah yeah that's exactly what happened mm. i saw this interview with one of her homegirls where the woman said uh, he was a big kid you know he had a mustache a mustache what? like that makes it okay then no you know nick jonas yes is he the one is he the Not one personally but i know <laughs> who he is is he the one that dated kate hudson or is that the or is that the other one joe a Jonas brother dated Kay Hudson? Yeah. I know it's Nick the youngest Jonas. one. Okay. Nick Jonas. I Googled it. I'm not, this is not me off the dome. Mm. That is good for her. I always forget that he's not a kid anymore, but he's young as fuck and he's forever dating grown ass women. Ooh, that's I think, true, actually. I think he's dating Priyanka Chopra right now. 
Oh, yes, he is. That's interesting to me. I, that was an interesting couple that I saw. He must have, like, hella Something. game. Something. Yeah. You think he can get it? Is he too young? No, I don't like his face. There's something about his face that rubs me the wrong way. One of the brothers, I think, is cute, but yeah, I don't. I don't Joe. know. Yeah, Joe. The oh. one that's with the Hadid. Anyway, so uh, Steve finds Mary Kay's diary where she talks about everything that's going on with Billy, and Steve confronts him, telling him to stay away from his wife. Which, what kind of man is he to where his first in- instinct is to confront the child? an idiot his name's steve let's not let us not forget that this is steve the frat boy okay (laughs) so so steve ends up confiding to a relative of his and that person calls the cops because finally are you fucking kidding me it took a fucking relative yeah finally there's somebody with some sense in this story yeah so mary Kay eventually gets arrested in march 1997 and she gets charged with two counts of child rape and is released without bail. Okay. Steve okay. moves out of the house and takes the kids away. She claims she didn't know that she had committed any crimes. She said she knew that there would be consequences, but didn't know that they would be criminal. So she didn't realize she needed an attorney. Oh, my God. Can I just say something really quick as a fucking attorney? <laughs> Go ahead. Everybody hates when people play dumb Mm -hmm. just own up to what you did right the judges like it society likes it your attorney will thank you for it and also there's only there's only so far that that defense will take you like exactly okay play dumb if you're not an accountant and you do some sort of like weird financial crimes violation right there's like honest dumbness right that happens but don't, not this don't play dumb thinking that you could just have sex with any child you felt like right or like you know what else i hate when people commit crimes and then they make excuses for the crime oh sure just say you fucking did it. Just say whatever. I was drunk. I am fucked up. I feel horrible about it. It keeps me up at night. I right. like, you know, show remorse. People love to forgive, especially exactly. men. But exactly. they love to forgive people. So just like fall on your sword, dude. Yes. Do you remember on Friends when Ross dates his college student? Yes. And that's <laughs> very odd. There's a, there's a whole bit in that storyline about him not thinking it was against the rules of the university and that it was just frowned upon. And he's so stupid. <laughs> that bitch Mary Kay tried to Ross Geller her defense. <laughs> in Ross's defense, she was like 20 or something, right? I think she was 19, 20, something like that. I don't, oh, Shh. could she drink? Yeah, that's what I was going to say. I was going to say, actually, I think she's over 21 because she drinks. She drinks. She's uh, Bruce Willis's daughter, huh? But he's like 30-something. Yeah, he's 30-something. Yeah. All right. Anyways. At that point, Mary reveals that she was seven months pregnant by Billy. (gasps) No. So a couple of months later, Mary Kay gives birth to the baby. Oh, my God. And a couple. How does she hide that? Damn, she's skinny. Yeah, she's pretty skinny. (laughs) So a couple months after that, she pleads guilty and faces up to seven years in prison. Seven? Yeah, seven. It should be That's more. It? it should be more, but. Yeah. The defense argues that Mary Kay is bipolar and is thus treatable with medication and therapy. <laughs> that shit's not gonna take back what she did. <laughs> Mary Kay addresses the court and asks for leniency and another chance. The judge agrees that Mary Kay is treatable and gives her a seven and a half year suspended sentence, meaning she can stay out of jail if she does three things. Participates in sex offender treatment, stays on her medication, and stays away from Villy. So she walks in January 1998. Wow, that's scary. So um, since she's a sex offender now, she can't have any unsupervised contact with her children. <gasps> And she's there goes her job, her career, right? Well, yeah, she she wasn't going to be a teacher after this, you know. <laughs> <laughs> Parents aren't fighting to get their kids into her class anymore. <laughs> because of this, Mary Kay gets bitter about being labeled a sex offender and stops complying with treatment, stops taking her meds, and starts seeing Villy. Jesus. At 3 a.m. on February 3rd, 1998, police find Mary Kay in a car on the side of the road. 
the police ask her if she's okay and she says yes then they oh. then they ask her if there's anyone else in her car and she says no the police officer looks in the car and finds Billy who claims his name is John Peterson wow wonder where he got that from yeah lie lie about what your name is you know <laughs> hmm. all right and how he must be like what 13 14 now um he's 14 i believe at this time wow because when they started their sexual relationship he was 12 but he was like a month away from turning 13 so i think he's like 14 now wow um yeah also in her car were six thousand two hundred dollars in cash what her passport and luggage with clothes for her for a baby and for villy Oh, so she was out. She was out of there. She was out. She doesn't. She doesn't acknowledge this in any of her interviews or anything. Like she doesn't even want to talk about this. But yeah, I mean, yeah, she was out. She was out. She was gonna kidnap this kid because that's mm-hmm. what it would have been. She would have kidnapped the, the. She's like the lowest of the low, in my opinion. No, seriously. So, so this this all happened within one month after she's released from jail. And Mary Kay is arrested and thrown into prison to serve her full seven-year sentence. Steve begins the divorce process and moves with the four kids to Alaska. This is I feel so bad for her kids with that guy, Steve. Oh, yeah, me too. How can you ever have a normal relationship with no. your mother and with anyone, really? And the relationship that their mother and father had when they were together appears to be really problematic also. So Right. So they just they got all sorts of fucked up visions of what a marriage or love should yeah, look like. Yeah, I feel really bad. I guess maybe going to Alaska was like the best no, thing seriously. for them. I think they would visit their mom from time to time, like maybe like once a year or something, but they for the most part they were out. Hmm. This is when a story that was already relatively big across the country becomes fucking huge around the world because soon after Mary Kay's back in custody, it turns out that Mary Kay is pregnant again. Oh my gosh, man. Mary Kay Letourneau has apparently never heard of condoms. Seriously. To be honest, I wonder if she used her pregnancies as a way to trap and manipulate Villy. Like, maybe. I wonder. He's a fucking kid having kids, man. I wonder if that's a common theme or tactic that female abusers use. You know? It seems like. Maybe. I don't know. Yeah. I don't know really anything about female abusers, but it seems like that could be a thing. So, despite the no contact order with Villy, Mary continues to violate the order and send messages to Villy throughout her sentence, leading her to often spend time in solitary confinement. Wow. In 1998, Mary Kay and Villy co-authored a book which was published in France called Only One Crime, Love, Un Seul Crime, L'Amour. Oh. <laughs> which, of course, France. <laughs> yeah. no, th- I sat next to two French people at dinner today. Oh, yeah? Yeah, they were fucking hawking up a storm. Were they eating French ass food? No, because no, they're Italian, Italian restaurant. Huh? Mm-hmm. <laughs> no disrespect to France, but that seems like you guys would be... I want to disrespect Paris because I thought that shit was weak. <laughs> <laughs> Remember when Don Draper throws the money at, at um, fucking Peggy? He's like, you want to go to Paris? Go to, go to Paris. Go to Paris. <laughs> I like that whole scene because she's like, you never say thank you. Yeah. It's like, that's, that's what, what the, the money's, money's for. for. <laughs> that's so fucking good. So Billy said in a deposition that Mary Kay kept telling him that they should get married because she believed that it would result in her serving less of her sentence. I think he was deposed for a lawsuit that he and his mother filed against the school dist- district that they eventually lost. And Billy was asking for lost wages and the costs of raising his two daughters. Oh. Other inmates reported that Mary Kay would often call him and berate him over his supposed relationships with other women. Well, how old is he now? Like 18? No, not even 18. Jesus. Or she's manipulating him over the phone, basically, you know? I'm sorry, where she's still in jail. Where are her children? Her four with her first husband are in Alaska. No, the, the two. Uh, Billy's mom has custody because he's not old enough to take custody because he's a minor. But isn't Billy's home like broken and with issues? No, it's because I mean, his mother is a good person. She just has to work really Works hard. Right. OK. So, yeah, she's the one who's really raising these kids. Okay, okay. But I forgot about that. they go and they visit 
they visit Mary Kay every week. Oh, wow. Yeah. So they have they do have a relationship with their mom, but it really it's Billy's mom that's raising them. Right. Um Okay. Billy did end up unofficially proposing to her while she was incarcerated. Once Billy came of age, he had to ask for the protective order against Mary Kay to be removed so that she would be legally allowed to see him. Wow. After seven years, Mary Kay was released from prison in 2004. The registered sex offender was then officially proposed to by Billy, and they registered at Macy's, which led to the media finding out about the impending wedding. That is fucking crazy. Then strangers from all across the country started sending them everything that was on the <gasps> registry. No way. That's disgusting. People, Do better, America. People were like s- sending them notes like, oh, we're behind you. We know it's true love, blah, blah, blah. Like, mm. oh, my God. This wasn't this wasn't that long ago. This was like, oh, four, oh, five. Yeah. And we live like in a 15 years. We ago. live in a different world now. <laughs> That's disgusting. Okay. Entertainment Tonight purchased the exclusive rights to the wedding, which took place in May 2005 and was a tightly secured event complete with mental with metal detectors and private security. Super low key. They had a beautiful ass wedding. <laughs> <laughs> Their wedding pictures are nice. She's, she looks good. She looks really pretty. Her dress is very beautiful. Apparently designed custom by one of the top designers in Seattle. He looks good. He's skinny. Like... It's it was a nice it was a nice wedding. <laughs> yeah. Okay, so Mary Kay began a career as a paralegal because she, you know, in the seven years she was like studying in the law library or whatever. Uh, and Billy is a DJ. Billy DJs under the name DJ Headline in the mix. <laughs> 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 Ah, DJ Roomba and DJ Headline. <laughs> so Mary Kay and Billy hosted and DJed several hot for teacher nights at a Seattle area nightclub. What the That's fuck? Fucking insane and disgusting. Ugh. Is this when she's wearing the Kangol hat? Yeah. <laughs> That's awesome. She was real. Her and Samuel L. Jackson were real into Kangol hats for a minute. <laughs> and LL Cool J. In May of 2017, after over 20 years together, 33-year-old Billy shocked the world when he filed for separation from Mary Kay. Yeah, this shit was fucking viral on Twitter and everything, yeah. remember? Dude, I was like, what the fuck? Because Init- I forget that they exist. And then all of a sudden, <laughs> these little things pop up. And then I'm like, oh, shit. Dude, I never forget they exist. <laughs> I think about this story a lot. Because also, this was one of the first Lifetime movies that I saw. Like, Oh, it's really good, dude. Yeah. Um, so initially he refused to comment about the status of their relationship, but eventually he would say that he'd done it in order to be able to start a business in Washington's legal cannabis industry, which would not be possible if he was married to a convicted felon. Wow. However, he later withdrew the petition, but again refuses to comment, although Mary says that they are living together in couples counseling and working on their problems. So what so what was it? I mean, it? he's been with her since he was a baby, so you know, it's tough. Yeah, people fucking change. Uh but what was so do you think it was bullshit about the pot thing? Cuz like they are of they are having problems it seems like. Yeah. Mm. Of course it was bullshit. I don't know. You think uh, it was a publicity stunt? I can't imagine that DJ headline is paying the bills. You Neither. know. And what is she? A paralegal? She's a paralegal. No way. Paralegal. And Washington and Amazon went to wash into Seattle, <laughs> so every rent went up and shit. Well, uh, Entertainment Tonight allegedly gave them seven hundred fifty grand for the rights of oh, rights of their right. wedding. They make money off that. Yeah, M- maybe, maybe that it was a publicity stunt to get some more money. Maybe I don't know, but they are. It seems like their th- their marriage is rocky at the moment, from what I understand. That's interesting. And she's like, she's fighting for it, like she's. This is the man that she wants to be with. So she's having problems. Um, that is so weird. It's oh, it's really bad. I read this article in the New York Times written by psychologists about lifelong damage that victims like Philly can face. Yeah, I mean, it's Stockholm Syndrome, isn't it's, it? Yeah, that's pretty much exactly what it is. Because, well, first of all, not only do they have to overcome like the stigma of rape, but 
a lot of people, and I saw this a lot when I was researching the story, a lot of people don't think that a that a boy, that a man can be raped by a woman. Which That's fucking disgusting. It's insane to me. I don't Of course. People are idiotic, honestly. Like there's only one word for yeah. that. Second, this was his first sexual experience. So following that, he most likely was unable to ever have a normal relationship with women or even a normal friendship with peers his own age. Of course not. Yeah. Because of this feeling of being an outcast, he probably felt like the only quote unquote relationship that he was able to maintain was his relationship with Mary Kay. So he's just trapped. Right. This would explain why he seemingly eagerly maintained his relationship with his abuser. Yeah. The article talks about a 50-something patient of hers who, as a child, had been sexually assaulted for many years by an uncle, and he stopped for a few years. But she described when the abuse started up again as them, quote-unquote, getting back together. So, Oh, no. So it's not unusual for victims to try to reshape the view of their abuse as a relationship. It can actually, That's really sad. it's actually kind of like a, like a coping mechanism. Uh, the bar- That's really sad. The Barbara Walters interview is very telling because Billy isn't someone that I would say looks happy in it. He admitted that he's struggling with depression and alcoholism. And I know he got a DUI a couple years back. Wow. Mary Kay continues to believe that she did nothing wrong, saying... Am I sorry that he's the father of my children and that we're married and he's the man of my life? No, I'm not. So this woman is a fucking narcissist. She's going to do whatever the fuck that she wanted to do, whether it was damaging to Villy or her own kids. Like, right. She decided that Villy was hers and like that was that. Yeah. That's so scary and sad. Also, I just want to point out that Mary Kay is a child molester who had only one known victim. And that's one of the things that Woody Allen defenders try to use as proof of his innocence, that he allegedly only had one victim. But regardless of any of the other facts in that case, where and where people stand on that issue one way or the other, that particular defense always made me mad because, come on, that's, yeah. that shit's not unheard of. Maybe it's uncommon, but... He's not a murderer. He only murdered he, one person. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> come on now. <laughs> like that doesn't stand for any other crime why would it stand for that right one? that's bullshit i i mean i understand trends but come on now yeah obviously woody's gonna have his own episode but yeah his case needs a lot of research so that's gonna be a tough one yeah fuck woody allen and fuck mary Kay. yeah fuck mary Kay letourneau um would you hire dj headline for your for your uh, for the renewal of your vows <laughs> no man that shit's fucking scary <laughs> I would hire DJ Roomba. The only DJ I'm hiring is Art LeBeau. Oh, if he's alive. If he's alive, I I don't know. Art LeBeau might be on his. Who's older, Art LeBeau or Stan Lee? DJ Mustard. <laughs> I don't know. Stan Lee is struggling though. Yeah. That was really good, May. Thank you. Thank you. I hadn't done a serious one in a long time. I thought I was kind of avoiding them, but. No, it's a good one though. It's so fucking weird and twisted, you know? Yeah. Everyone, Shit like uh, that never happens. I, I highly recommend. I mean, it does fucking happen. That's a thing. Yeah. You don't hear about it. And incest is such like ultimate taboo. Like, oh, yeah. Disgusting thing to me. I want to know more about that aspect of the story. Because why is that only in the movie? Why doesn't she talk about that anywhere else? Because it probably didn't happen. She was just probably looking for fucking excuses. And if she's saying one of her brothers she had a relationship with. What? The one that worked for Bush or the yeah. one that worked for Trump? Let's assume it's the one that works for Yeah. Shit. <laughs> I got five on that. <laughs> so fuck you, Mary Kay Letourneau. Our teachers are always glad to answer questions about the rules. Yes, most of the time we remember and respect the rules. But sometimes, some of us have problems because of not knowing the rules or forgetting them. Yeah. So uh, what else? A quickie. Yep, we got a quickie. I got a quickie for you. Yes. Okay. Fergie Ferguson. (laughs) That's not her real last name. Uh, That is her last name. (laughs) No, I'm talking about Fergie the singer. Yeah, Sarah, uh, Stacy Ferguson. Oh, that's right. Yeah. That's why she calls herself Fergie. Yeah. (laughs) (laughs) She's a duchess. But she's not Fergie Ferguson. (laughs) No, she's Stacy. 
<laughs> Jesus Christ. Okay. Fergie Ferguson is the only female member of the Black Eyed Peas. And she's like a singer and shit. Mm-hmm. She does her own solo shit, you know. Yeah. We yeah. all know London Bridge. Mm-hmm. We all know how to spell Fergalicious. Mm-hmm. <laughs> <laughs> one of my favorite memes is <laughs> this stupid one where it's a guy in a hospital bed and there's a nurse like leaning in next to him. And it says, nurse, sir, you've been in a COVID since 2005. And it's a patient, Fergalicious. <laughs> <laughs> so stupid and hilarious. Dude, that the the mid two thousands belong to Fergie. I'm I'm with him. Me too. Anyways, in two thousand five, the Black Eyed Peas were allegedly over an hour late to a show in San Diego, and when they arrived, they rushed onto the stage to start their performance. So I know, was, I know what the story is, and it's yeah. funny because, go on. What? Because I have to pee. <laughs> 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 so there was like no time to you know do anything yeah so fergie says the adrenaline was going because they were all stressed out on the bus and stuck <laughs> in traffic and then once they got there they immediately all ran on stage and started performing and jumping around and then she did it <laughs> halfway through let's get it started she fucking got it started she- <laughs> and everyone knows once you start you can't stop you can't so she yeah. fucking peed herself Th- that's fergalicious as fuck Full blown on stage, peed herself in front of a full goddamn audience. Dude, I feel for her. She's wearing these horrible knee length khaki shorts that were like all the rage in the mid 2000s, too. Almost. So there was like no hiding it. They were like pinstriped or something, like brown pinstriped shorts, huh? Something like that. Something yeah. like that. They were like almost gauchos, but. Yes. Yeah. They. It was a bad look. Whatever it was, it was a bad look. <laughs> I've done a lot of embarrassing things in my life, but I have never peed myself. I'll oh, knock I, on wood on that. oh, I've I've peed myself. <laughs> <laughs> I'm actually surprised that I've never peed myself. Oh yeah, it well, seems like something I do. But don't I worry, haven't. don't worry. We got time. It'll but, happen. Yeah, it'll happen. <laughs> if you didn't piss yourself at your bachelorette party, though, it might be it might not happen for a while. <laughs> my bachelorette party's so fun. I still think about it from time to time. We should post pictures. The um place we stayed at was just incredible yeah shout out to austin yeah austin is fucking fun i would go back 1010 do recommend yes so when the pictures first surfaced of fergie with her piss stain (laughs) the band's representative denied it and said it was a sweat stain i mean yeah please no you look at the it's piss come on also that amount of sweat i would be like worried about what's and going only on in that area yeah i would be like that's more concerning than pissing yourself you know no I, <laughs> other part of her fucking shorts is wet just <laughs> her coochie if your cooch sweats that much like you need to like go see a doctor see immediately gyno, yeah. like yeah. don't do the show go to your doctor <laughs> so she did finally later come clean and said that this was the most unattractive moment of her life why didn't she why didn't she pop a squat you know they like, were like in the middle of a song i don't know dude Just yeah like, like run backstage like keep singing like what was where is the love or whatever and like <laughs> nay it was let's get it started. oh that's they were right jumping around they were po- i fucking explained this did you not listen uh, no you're right you're right I the saw- adrenaline was running they <laughs> ran on stage started jumping and shit she just fucking peed um this happened i think that uh, this happened shortly after I saw them in concert at Wango Tango. Oh, interesting. Yeah, and I totally see like why it could be a problem during Let's Get It Started because there's like they they're all jumping around. There's like beach balls in the crowd and shit. Yeah, they're getting it started. Yeah. All right. Sorry, Fergie. Um. However, in regards to it being the most unattractive moment in her life, I would beg to differ because uh. I would like to remind everyone of her 2018 performance of the national anthem at the start of the NBA All Star Game. <laughs> the uh, the national anthem was almost performance art, though. Like, that was <laughs> ridiculous. <laughs> Remember everybody's fucking face reactions. Yeah. Shit? Fucking Draymond Jimmy Green. Kimmel? Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> That's so funny, dude. Oh yeah, that was. Would you rather pee yourself or or sing the anthem that badly in front of that many people again? Oh, pee myself for sure. Yeah. Yeah, uh, no way. I don't know. No, that was really bad. 
I think I would rather sing the anthem. Really? No, yeah. dude. Because then you get all sorts of hate from people that don't even give a shit about you. Everybody That's knows the true. fucking anthem. Donald Trump doesn't know it. <laughs> <laughs> uh, she should have sang Let's Get It Started instead of the anthem. <laughs> Seriously. <laughs> and people would have been like, oh, this is America now? <laughs> yes. <laughs> God bless America. It's because she's love- it's because she's so three thousand and eight, and we're so two thousand late. <laughs> the Harlem Globe Thotters come out. <laughs> Globe Thotters. <laughs> yes, that's yes. the all female <laughs> version <laughs> for three thousand and eight. <laughs> the Globe Thotters. Yep. Yeah. <laughs> all right. Her well, uh, thanks everybody. That's the Drama Club. Bon voyage. <laughs> um, don't forget to follow us at Drama Club Pod on Twitter and Instagram. You can also email us Drama Club Pod at gmail.com. <laughs> Find us on Reddit at the underscore drama underscore club. Okay. Cooler. You, thanks. You know, do you know the hotline? No, hell no. I don't know the hotline. 555. Oh, I don't know it. 505 539 yeah <laughs> all right guys shop Bye. shop at zappo so we can get us <laughs> i was gonna say a scholarship let's get a scholarship from zappo the shoe academy all right bye however whatever with your helmet <laughs>